Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Screener.com in order to capture your screen or create a screencast. Uh, the first thing you need to do is go to Screener.com and sign in. The purpose of signing in is that it will allow you to publish uh, your screenshot, otherwise you can create a screenshot but you won't be able to publish it. So it allows you to uh, sign in using either Twitter or Facebook or Google or Yahoo or Microsoft. Uh, in my case, since I already have a Gmail account that gives me access to Gmail and YouTube, I just use my, my Google sign-in. Um, after I'm signed in, I click on Record. And it's detecting Java, so if you don't have Java already, it'll give you a link to upload Java, to um, get Java, the latest version of Java. I'm going to accept the risk and to run the application after reading the fine print. And I'm going to allow application from this website. So this website is requesting access to the control of Java. So I'm going to allow it. And now you're going to see this box that has been created. And this is, I can use to control how much of my screen that I want to actually capture. So if I don't want to capture the top of my screen, I can just capture this part here and avoid capturing the top of my screen. Uh, I can move it around if I want. I can make it as small and as big as I want. Uh, in most cases, I'm going to want to capture my entire screen. So I'll make it the whole amount. Uh, and capture the whole screen. Once I have my, once I've uh, moved and resized the frame, I can click on the red button to record, and it'll give me a countdown: three, two, one. After it says go, now everything um, that I'm clicking on, everything that I'm doing within my screen, is going to be recorded for people to see. Um, so I can do a how-to video. Uh, on Blackboard and teach people how to log into Blackboard, where to put their password, what to do if they forgot their passport, uh, and this will all show up. And once I'm done, I can press done. And if I go back to Screener, it's going to give me an opportunity to preview my screencast so I can listen. And once I'm happy that uh, it recorded properly and that I'm good with my screencast, I need to type a description in here. So in this case, I'll just call it test three, and I will publish it. If I'm not happy, I could have also deleted it in the right-hand corner here, but since I'm happy, uh, I'm just going to wait. Usually, depending on the length of your video, it doesn't take too much time to publish it. Uh, the longest video that you can do for Screener is five minutes. It won't let you do anything longer than that, but that can be a good thing as well because you want to create concise, interesting videos. Um, so since this one was fairly short, only 22 seconds, it's going to publish it pretty fast, and now I can play it. And now I have a couple different options once I've put it onto Screener. I can download the MP4 file right here and put it on my computer. I can publish it to YouTube. Um, sometimes this gives me a little bit of trouble, so usually I'll just download the MP4, P, MP4 file, have it on my computer, and then put it into YouTube separately. Uh, I can also embed it into Blackboard or wherever I want straight from Screener. So I can go uh, get the embed code and I can use the old embed code and I can copy and paste this into Blackboard in order to embed it directly in there. Um, what I would recommend for most people is just to download the MP4, MP4 file. That way if anything happens to Screener.com um, you already have a copy of it and you can upload it on your own to YouTube or you can put it on any other sort of video hosting site. Uh, and as you can see here along the right hand side I've used Screener many times so it's got examples of all of my Screener posts. Uh, it's a great tool for quick, easy uh, videos and captures particularly for how-to things for your students. Uh, and that is how you use Screener.